So if you've watched my last video, I basically broke down how the white decay aesthetic and the McBling aesthetic are completely different from one another and not the same in any way. So what even is the McBling aesthetic? Well, it started roughly in 2003 and lasts until 2008. And it was centered around the growing celebrity culture at the time, reality TV, paparazzi, and all things ultra feminine and luxury. The color scheme for this aesthetic revolves heavily around the color pink, but bright colors such as blue, yellow, and purple weren't uncommon. And there also seems to be a resurgence of this aesthetic on TikTok recently, but how did it even start? Well, let's get into it. So in order to really analyze the McBling aesthetic, we gotta go way back. All the way back to reality TV in the early 2000s. So the show that really got this whole thing started was actually A Simple Life. So for those of you who don't know, A Simple Life is a reality TV show about two incredibly wealthy socialites, Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. And they basically just traveled to small towns and just struggled to do basic things like cleaning, getting jobs, and it's really just them inconveniencing their whole family for about five seasons. So this combined with their partying and antics in their day-to-day -day lives resulted in a lot of infamy for these two that the paparazzi just couldn't get enough of. And there was also this noticeable shift into celebrity culture at the time, and a lot of this had to do with the paparazzi. So back in the 90s, there really wasn't a lot of money to be made in the paparazzi business, just because magazines and newspapers weren't really interested in what celebrities were doing on their downtime. They were interested in more story-driven things like weddings, babies, and affairs. However, people really started to enjoy these photos of celebrities just doing regular things, as they were more relatable to the average person. So the demand for these photos just created a huge boom in the industry. Us Weekly went from printing every month to every week, and they started a head-to-head -head war with People magazine. Then other celebrity-specific magazines just kept popping up. Like, people were getting paid $10,000 for a picture of Ben Affleck just buying books. Like, there was some serious money to be made. And with the blow-up of TMZ, the paparazzi actually started getting out of their cars to confront stars in person, which is completely normal now, but back then it was such a huge taboo. And magazines like Insta also helped with this shift, as before nobody was really checking for what celebrities were wearing, like on the red carpet. But when they started, they used to tell you what the celebrity was wearing, but also where you could find a dupe. So kind of feeding into this idea that celebrities were kind of relatable. And they basically influenced the way people watched red carpets before award shows. And this all kind of feeds into the McBlink culture and aesthetic because there was this huge hyper focus on celebrities and what they wore and did, and it really changed pop culture forever. So really, let's get into the fashion, because that's my favorite part. I know there's a lot of people that don't like the fashion in the early 2000s, which I can definitely understand, but I think it was great. So let's start with the trends. The amount of people that hate on low-rise jeans Guys, come on, they weren't that bad. It was definitely a moment back then and everyone got to show off their midriffs and their thongs. Every it girl had one of these in their closets. Mini skirts were a big trend in the early 2000s from your typical pleated skirt to a simple jean skirt. They were all the rage and the shorter, the better. From the Murakami Louis Vuitton bags, the Burberry clothes, and the Tiffany necklaces, designer everything was a huge fashion statement, more so than it had ever been before in pop culture. Whether it was fake or not didn't matter, just having the designer name or brand was very important at this time. Dapper Dan also had a huge influence on starting this trend because at the time he was reworking bags from brands like Gucci and making clothes out of them. He really was the father of this trend and designer brands didn't start utilizing this trend to its fullest extent until he did it. Everything was so blinged out back then from tops, jeans, sunglasses, and bags. Sequins were a popular trend and the iconic Angaro butterfly top is a great example at showing off this flashy trend. Rhinestones were on everything and it was fabulous. 
and I wanted a Bedazzler so badly when I was a kid. I had never ended up getting one, but I did have plenty of rhinestones on my clothes. Less is more, it was definitely not a thing in this aesthetic. This trend has been around for such a long time, but it just seems to keep coming back. Maybe because it's such a timeless style. Whatever it is, people love this style in the early 2000s, and halter tops and dresses were all the rage. Brands such as Juicy Couture were really big at this time, and they really carved out a spot for the first wave of athleisure to take place. Every celebrity was seen wearing one of these velour tracksuits. And they didn't stop at tracksuits either. They made perfume, bags, and accessories as well. And Baby Fat was such an iconic brand, and there was nothing like it out at the time. It was curated by the model Kimarly Simmons, and was a mix of high fashion and streetwear, and it was important to black girls and women as it catered to and was for us. Celebrities like Lil' Kim and Naomi Campbell were attached to the brand, making it more renowned, and you can't forget the famous Cameron and Raven Simone pics of the brand. Some accessories that were really big at the time were sunglasses, especially the colorful ones. Points added if they had rhinestones on them. Bandanas were pretty popular at this time, especially worn in your hair, and if you didn't have any bandanas, you could definitely put in a hair clip or five to complete the look. Belly chains were extremely popular and were paired a lot with low-rise jeans. And for bags, the smaller the better. Bags like the Dior Saddle Bag and the Fendi Baguette were super popular, but any bag that you could sling over your shoulder was fine. And we can't forget all the jelly accessories we had back then either, including the shoes. If you look at the runway shows from the 90s, you can kind of see how they influenced the McBling aesthetic in the early 2000s like Alexander McQueen's Bumsters. They were considered so controversial at the time, but really he inspired people to show off the hips and the lower back more, which influenced the rise of low-rise jeans. We can also see this in Tom Ford's run at Gucci, where he reinvented the brand, making it sexier and more appealing to a younger crowd. Clothes during the McBling era became shorter and more revealing, and we can't forget Tom Ford's Gucci as one of the pioneers of that style. So a lot of the movies and television shows from the early 2000s that show off this aesthetic are mostly rom-coms or shows geared towards girls and women. Reality shows like A Simple Life are perfect for showing off this aesthetic. It was hyper-feminine and definitely luxury-oriented. The clothes in the show were used to show the contrast between Paris and Nicole in comparison to everyone they interacted with. It definitely highlights how people could look at the style and think ditzy or materialistic and self-absorbed. But there were also some really good movies and shows that showcase this aesthetic that everyone should watch. Mean Girls is a really good one. The costume design in that movie, especially the plastics, are very McBling-esque. The short skirts, the Burberry and Louis Vuitton bags, and the tracksuits. Some movies I would also recommend are Legally Blonde, Belly, Sleepover, Crossroads, and Divin Aoki's Costumes and Too Fast Too Furious. If you're a TV buff instead, I recommend Sex in the City or just watching Disney classics like Lizzie McGuire, That's So Raven, and Zoe 101. The McBling aesthetic mostly died when the 2008 housing crisis happened. It resulted in the stock market crashing and caused a crippling recession. Suddenly thousands of people were out of jobs and the ultra-materialistic and maximalist aesthetic was seen as gaudy and offensive. People started to scale it down, and that was pretty much it for the McBling aesthetic. This aesthetic returning to the mainstream had been building for quite some time, starting around late 2019, but I feel like the spring and summer of 2020 was when it really took off. We started seeing articles and think pieces about the revival of this aesthetic, and stores were trying to do everything in their power to capitalize on this trend. And I think one of the reasons the McBling aesthetic is so popular again is partly because of nostalgia. And we can thank the newfound popularity of thrifting. Now finding vintage or archive pieces is cooler than ever and everyone wants in. Fashion is also a 20 year cycle, which is more than enough time for people to admire and want to emulate what they were never a part of. Nostalgia is a really powerful tool, and with all the industries capitalizing on it, and all the conversations we have daily about shows we used to watch and things we used to wear, who can really blame people for wanting to go back to that? 
Anyways, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and tell me your favorite part about the McBling aesthetic.